Are you having trouble making money in Escape from Tarkov? Are you under level 20 and don't have the flea market unlocked yet? Does it feel like you can barely keep your head above water? Hi, I'm Koozie, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to swim. I mean, uh. Hi, I'm Koozie, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you three methods that will guarantee you heaps of cash before level 20, and you won't believe method number three. There's multiple ways you can make money in Escape from Tarkov. First method is by far the easiest one, and it's utilizing your scav run. But there's a twist, okay? We're gonna go factory. I know, you're confused. You might even be angry. But look, dude, just stick around, watch this raid, and then I am going to explain why afterwards. Okay, so we spawn in. There's 13 minutes and 45 seconds left. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm sprinting straight for the extract but you have to extract when there's less than 13 minutes otherwise you get a run through in factory so we're going to be taking this extract but we're going to be chilling for a second or 20 and hope that no pmc or player scav kills us Okay, so let me explain why. In a factory scav raid, you're gonna spawn in with 10 minutes or less typically, uh, but there are the random times where you do spawn in where there's, you know, 13, 14 minutes left, okay? But in a minute and five seconds, we made probably um, <clears throat> half a million rubles. <laughs> Just kidding. This is going to hurt so bad, but this is for science. In a minute and however much time that was, five seconds, we made probably 200,000 rubles, give or take, okay? The reason why I do this is because if you take the amount of time we spent, the amount of money we made surpasses that of like an interchange of reserve run. Now, I know there's nothing better than scaving into an interchange run and finding a GPU and a Tetris on the same raid. That happens what? Like every... 10 raids not to mention all the other times you scab in and you get killed by freaking timmy jr chatted out of his mind or timmy that is a player scab and doesn't really care about scav karma so he's just gonna kill you anyways you just spent 10 minutes of your life in interchange for nothing whereas with this you spawn in you beeline it to the extract and now you're getting out of there with at least something so i'm going to vendor all of this stuff and i'm gonna do it in rubles too so i, I am gonna be fencing the intel we're already up to 60k. Just as a heads up, this gun is above 60 durability. Uh, and because of that, Mechanic can buy it as a whole. But in the event you go to sell it to Mechanic and it, it's like grayed out, just disassemble it because he can buy everything except for the main component here. I'm going to do that just as you would. And the element you would sell to fence, obviously. We're going to sell our melee weapons to jaeger and then your grenades you can honestly just fence them we got a solid defense that's thirty-two thousand rubles on the flea market that's easily three hundred thousand rubles after vendoring vendoring all that right there we came out with a hundred and thirty three thousand rubles in a minute and 10 seconds right or however much and again there's nothing wrong with going with the traditional manner whenever you just think about the time that you invested and the money that you earned on top of if you look at the long term i really think doing when the in and out factory scav runs is the best method. All right, so method number two is gonna involve secret stashes. It's a really good strategy if you're trying to make money, you're not really gonna have that many PVP encounters. You will have a few scav encounters just because of where they're at. We're gonna be going to interchange in an offline raid. I'm gonna be showing you a few of the spots. I'm not gonna show you everything, but hopefully you can run this route and it'll, it'll help. All right, so we're in and we have an awkward spawn. We have options though. The best bet for this would be we are literally backside of Ollie or backside of Goshen. And how I knew that was the uh, you see how it like juts out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go this way and show you guys a few a few secret stashes. It looks like we're going to have railway. We do. This is actually a good loot route, actually. Um, power station is coming up here, but it's. It's kind of hit or miss as far as like players go. If you have that spawn, there's typically uh, players that have spawned over there if it's a team or just a solo or whatever. But a lot of times what, what players that spawn there like to do is they run in, they hit the power, and then they run inside because they want to try to go upstairs to 
the ultra medical room or they run inside Takiba. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically just hugging the wall. I'm going to come to the end of the wall here, turn left, go to the blue wall, turn left again, look down. There's our first one. Hello. Okay. And we're looting, right? So we're going to literally pick up everything and equip what we can. Okay. My best advice is to loot, like try to fill up your inventory as fast as you can. Because obviously a square with something in it is better than a square that's empty. And then just prioritize. So for instance, the first thing that's going to go is this oat flakes. And I guarantee you therapist probably pays more for that for the escrow than she does the oat flakes. Now also uh, other pro tip is if you're stuck on that Jaeger task, uh, black boxes, uh, more specifically an interchange, do spawn uh, the Iskras in the first slot. But we've got the black box, two toolboxes here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around back here. The car is there, so if by some miracle we find 3,000 rubles, we could honestly just loot power station and just get out. But if you're approaching power station and you don't hear a scav or see a scav, that probably means that there is a player nearby. But what I like to do is I, I like to run along the back. Before we do that, you can check this trunk. Typically, not much spawns in it, but in this case, water did. So that's cool. You can drink that to work on your metabolism. We're going to run along this back side here. There's a box here. I would check that because it can spawn like healing items, ammo, stuff like that. And then right here next to this looks like a generator uh, is another he could, uh, secret sash. More strikes. If I wanted to, I could equip that and just insurance fraud the helmet, but that offers no protection. But like I said, we're looting, right? So we're grabbing everything. And since we spawned and have this hand of cards we're gonna go in and loot power station there's a pc there jacket here always check your jackets pc here there's a tech spawn here on the shelf a tech spawn here and another valuable item spawn can spawn like beard oil and uh, a couple other things uh pc here filing cabinet here and then inside there's one two three toolboxes and then one, two, three, four jackets. And then check right here because there could be food items, uh, cigarettes, medical items like this grizzly, which is really valuable. What I would do uh, if I didn't have anything valuable in my secure container and I had an alpha, I would literally just empty everything out of my alpha and just put this in there because a grizzly does everything. All right. So I'm pretending that we looted, right? We have to go to railway, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to time lapse this until we get to the next little area. But just pay attention to where I'm at. Okay. So did you see how I did that? I basically just hugged the wall the entire way through. And if you come back here, there's another black box that will give you an escrow for the quest. And an STM barrel, apparently, which I'm not going to pick up because the STM isn't really worth that much. So from there, we're going to go over here. And in between these two rocks is another secret stash. We hit that. What you want to start thinking about is value per square. Ideally, you want to go with 10,000 rubles per square. But like I said, if you just want to uh, pick everything up, I, I would highly recommend doing that. And then just if you think it's worth more, then just, you know, sell it or drop it for uh, the more valuable item. So you can hug over here. And then what I would do if you wanted to, you could just like go straight back and then it'll meet up to where we're going. But there are like two more secret sashes I want to show you before we extract. So if you come up to this little like office building thing, 
You come to the bush. Right here at the bush is another one. So we just fill up everything, literally. Okay? And then what you do is you go behind the bus. Over to where the overpass... Starts to come off, off the ground. You crouch. And then... You hit it. Okay. And then... Just to kind of give you a little bit of... Information so that I'm kind of touching on the other... Caches. Or secret spawns. You see that far piece of heavy machinery and the uh, bent over blue walls if you go along there there's um one two three four i want to say about four stashes that you can hit that aren't that aren't that hard to find you know what screw it i wouldn't recommend doing this in an actual ray because especially at this point if you do exactly what i'm doing there's going to be people that are starting to extract and uh, this leaves you pretty much in the open. On top of that, scavs like to spawn right over there. If you just keep going to railway, which is where we will be extracting, uh, that's probably the safer route. But in the event, you find yourself over here. Want to start with the tent. Okay, point of reference here. We're going to go up. And then to the left here, right in front of the bigger tree. And survey says there's a 3M armor. Okay. Then what we do is we cut across. We're gonna use the low ground for cover. We're gonna assume that our enemies are are on our right side, so we're gonna use the trees as a way to break up their line of sight on us. Then you come to the first concrete pile of rubble come around it you get to the next and right here towards the front of it closest to the tracks there's another all right flash drive you would put that in your uh, secure container because that's worth a lot now we're gonna go straight across straight across the tracks we're gonna go to mr. t-rex here we're gonna take a right Hug the wall. And then this first bush is another secret stash location. Shemag. We can actually put that on. And yeah. So as you can see, it pretty much spawns everything in, in the game. Um, so now the last one we're going to hit is at this pile of rubber, rubble rubbish and right in the middle of the two piles this is our final one and there you go uh, the slim diary I would put in your secure container as well and then our extract is just up ahead now you want to watch out for extract campers Especially the Railway Expel, it's, I don't know. I, I've only been extra camped on this map maybe like once, and it's been here once or twice. So, easy peasy. The focus for this is to just make money. We're not trying to fight. We're not trying to really engage. It's completely okay to spawn in, find a path that works best for you, get some loot, and then get out. Because surviving in this game is huge. Which brings me to method number three. Method number three is to simply not die. No, but seriously. Because when you survive a raid, you're coming out with the gear you went in with on top of all the stuff that you just found. Say you do 10 raids like this and there's like five or six that you actually survive. That's huge, bro. Don't be afraid to just spawn in, find a path, and then get out of there. Until you have access to the flea market, you're going to die if you go against a player. 
your armor sucks, your ammo sucks, you're going to die. So it's better just to focus on looting so you can get your money up. What I would recommend is just literally selling everything. That is the best way, especially if you're on a standard account. Stash upgrades are atrocious, man. They're a money sink, but they're worth it. They are. But anyways, I hope that this guide helped you in some way, shape or form. And dude, remember that this is Tarkov, right? Anything can happen. It's very RNG based the majority of the time. You can go in, fill in on top of the world and scab will one tap you in the head with seven millimeter buckshot from a hundred meters away. It just happens. But hey, briefly is rough, but you will get there. So remember that you got to keep pushing. Hey, do me a favor. If you did like the video today, make sure to drop a like. I would greatly appreciate it. If you're new and you want to find your way back for more escape from Tarkov content, <laughs> make sure to hit the subscribe button with notifications on. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.